This is the Open University. This is not the real Open University. This is the Momus Open University. Synthetic Open University. A random series of talks by Momus. The gaunt minstrel of modern angst. artificial intelligence. So far, my job as a songwriter has been safe. Each time I asked for an automation of moments music, it gave me doggerel and rubbish. But this month, for the first time, I got a chilly feeling that perhaps the game will soon be over. They had a former website called Udio, who was able to take lyrics I've written set them entirely credible pieces of music from various points in history to set I by, but not composed by me. Hello, it's the real me and not a fake AI me, but I want to talk about AI because the theme this week is uh, just how surprised I was when I made the advert for um, Yikes, my new album, at this state of um, AI. Yikes, there's a new album out from Moments to God. It sounds like a compilation because guess what? It's got codependency and becoming you, staring a hole and before the war too. On websites like Udio and Suno.com, uh, which can generate uh, very convincing versions of uh, pretty much any kind of song from the 20th or 21st century that you you can uh, describe. Yikes! The executioners come wobbling round again, excited by the stench of burning wafting from your home. There you sit, journaling, journaling your pain a rotting like a butterfly, a trampled down to low Usually when I make an album advert, it's uh, with the 3D visualization software on discmakers.com which uh, shows you what your CD package is going to look like from various different angles and so before it's a real object, you can tout it out there in, on the webs um, as a, a potential object and, and twirl it around and sort of make a, make a promise to the uh, buyers that uh, there is something that's going to be for sale that's physical. But of course, it's, uh, it's pure 3D manipulation. Um, and I guess it kind of uses AI as well because you can um, twirl it around. And so far, really, I've not been terribly impressed by what AI can do in terms of the, trying to write a momus lyric, for instance. It's complete rubbish. And it, if you say, write a momus lyric about, um, you know, the, the Cuban Missile Crisis, and it'll do these awful couplets, uh, nothing very um, threatening to my job. There is a line on the, one of the, in one of the songs, Took my livelihood and rat moved in next door. I haven't been particularly afraid that a chatbot would take away my livelihood as a songwriter. That meager though it may be, it's not a, a full time job, unfortunately for me. Um, but uh, I've started to wonder, and, and really, I mean, ChatGBT, the cat which farted, as I like to call it, since that's what, what it is in French, le chat, j'ai pété. Um, is um, also surprisingly useless at doing things like uh, if you ask it to describe the taste of coffee without using the letter E, it's simply incapable of grasping the concept of not using the letter E, as Georges Perec did in his book La Disparition. Uh, avoid, in English, he wrote a whole novel without using the letter E, which is, of course, the most common letter in English and in French. Um, chat GPT, the 3.5 anyway, the, the, the free one, um, is completely incapable of that. It's also incapable of, for instance, if you ask it um, to tell a joke without it being in the format of a question, what do you call a, you know, a pirate who walks into a <laughs> whatever, um, with some awful pun in the answer. Uh, it's unable to tell the kind of jokes I was telling in the book of jokes, which are situational jokes. Um, so uh, I wasn't particularly worried or threatened or, you know, it just seemed like an extension of the kind of 
thing that Eliza was doing 20 years ago, or the evil twin of Eliza, which was called Azil, <laughs> which was meant to be a shrink, a psychoanalyst. Uh, and Eliza was meant to be a kindly psychoanalyst who's, who's sort of like a, like a psychoanalyst would let you sit on the couch and you do all the work while they would just interpolate occasionally a question like, uh, what kind of childhood did you have? Or, you know, is, is that concerning to you? And then it, because psychoanalysts are so useless in that sense or so detached, uh, it was able to emulate them very easily. So it seemed to me at first dealings with the cat which farted, uh, it was that kind of thing. It was really just making you do the, the heavy lifting. But, um, and I think text-wise it kind of still is, you know, and it's not very advanced on that level. I also ask it things like, uh, who designed the costumes in the 1978 Isolar 2 tour by David Bowie? And it'll tell me, you know, um, Kansai Yamamoto, who of course designed the Ziggy stuff, but had nothing to do with uh, 1978 and the stage tour. And that, uh, the correct answer to that is, um, is uh, not Ola Hudson. I was want to say Ola Hudson, but it's actually Natasha Kornilov. Um, Ola Hudson did the uh, um, Isolar 1, which was the Thin White Duke tour. So I then correct it and it apologizes profusely. But if I go in from another account, um, it hasn't learned anything because it will still say Kansai Yamamoto designed those costumes in 1978. It, ha it does not learn. I guess I'm not an authoritative source, you know, and if someone, secondary person then questions, or me in another account, then questions that uh, answer, it will apologize again and then correct itself and actually eventually come up with the correct answer. But um, it doesn't seem to learn. It's meant to be a, a, a language learning model, but it doesn't actually learn. It certainly doesn't learn from punters who use it. So, um, you know, again, no threat to my livelihood as a, an intellectual, a Maoist intellectual in the music industry um, or any kind of thinker, writer, talker. But where I've been super impressed is the music in this latest advert where I just fed into audio.com the lyrics on this album. Love me if you love me slowly Hold me if you hold me near Take these feelings and control me Make these feelings disappear I don't think you can do it with copyright lyrics which, uh, which are already published, I'm not entirely sure. And you also can't specify, when you're specifying the kind of music you want these lyrics to be born upon, you can't specify uh, artist names. So I can't say I want you to do something in the style of Momus. <laughs> Promised us a system worth believing in Where we could flourish in the sun A world we could move freely through and raise our children in Where justice raised a sword for everyone And then we started noticing The way you got things done The lobbying corruption And the pain With faltering enthusiasm We still stumbled on the style of moments, it's a, a debatable thing. What is my musical style? I think I've been, I've had the longevity that I have had precisely because I don't have a style. What I have is a number of pastiche abilities which um, glom onto other people's styles and, and pastiche them. Um, of course, there is a sum, there is a, a series of, a sum of habits uh, which make my music sound always like me no matter what I'm doing. I don't work with other people very much. It's surprising really, uh, pretty much everything on my 40 odd albums is generated musically by me. But it's, you know, I have an ear for pastiche. I'm not really a great musician, you know, in terms of keyboards. Guitar I'm pretty good at. Keyboards I'm really very amateur at. Um, and any other instrument is mostly an emulated electronic form of, uh, you know, clarinets or whatever. Accordion, you know, I was able to do some kind of uh, systems music accordion just by pumping the thing very fast and hitting the, the chord buttons. Um, so really, I'm very much an amateur. And of course, that limitation is itself a spur to originality. If you can't play something well, inverted commas, you can play it interestingly. So um, that's what I tend to do. I tend to make interesting textures. And also I have an ear for, wow, what if we took this in the direction of Deutsche Amerikanische Freundschaft. You 
know, so in that sense, what I'm doing is very similar to what AI is doing these days, which is that it's, it's listened, in whatever sense you want to understand that, to all the popular music of the past. And it kind of now, and this is the bit that really staggers me, it can actually convincingly and with, with relatively high audio quality um, create a human sounding voice that will sing along lyrics you put in. can't do at the moment is you can't put in a, as far as I could see, you can't put in a key or a, 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 you can sort of structure things a little bit. If you do, there's a remix function on audio.com where you can say, I want there to be a bridge after that. And I want there to be a chorus here. And you can specify the song chunk by chunk with the lyrics of the verse and then the lyrics of the chorus. And so to that extent, it is um, promising. Um, I'm kind of raring to go. I'm I, I, simultaneously threatened and excited by this development. Kind of raring to <laughs> just made an album, but I kind of want to make another album using AI because if you simply specify that you want instrumentals, you can get amazing sounds, which are not going to be copyright sounds, um, of choirs or orchestras or medieval music or, you know, pretty much anything you can imagine and can specify with a phrase or two. Uh, you can get as far as I know it's a legal gray area that nobody's yet really decided who these uh, things belong to if anyone um, the only payment system I can see working is simply that um, the, the companies using AI would tithe a certain amount to every music publisher in the entire world, which in turn would get passed on through rights organizations to musicians. Uh, but of course, a lot of this is dead people. Um, this is the hauntological side of, of AI, that it's resurrecting the dead, you know, in a very literal sense. This is a zombie process in which uh, musicians are brought back to life. And of course, some of the most ghoulish but also most exciting things uh, about that are, are, for me, like bringing David Bowie back to life. My soul of one and zeros With digital eyes Circuit green with a mission Digital profit with a plan A binary creation Of circuits and man now get Bowie sounding um, things that sound like outtakes from say Hunky Dory uh, which is nice because actually the Bowie re-release the official Bowie organization is just not it's scraping whatever barrels they have there and just not coming up with much there's not much interesting stuff out there perhaps or perhaps they're simply unwilling to release it or it's going to come out slowly eventually. Nobody, it seems to be like a chicken with its head cut off, really. It seems more automatic than the automated Bowie tracks, actually, in a weird way. It's like because it's money motivated um, and it's, uh, uh, there's no artistic uh, direction as far as I can see in what's getting re-released. And perhaps it's all hidden. Perhaps the, the corpses, Bowie's corpse, song corpses are all buried in places that only he knew about. Um, but I'm actually rather fascinated to make uh, synthetic Bowie songs, for instance. I never know which version I'm going to be. I seem to have so many choices. 
happened to me. My ability to pastiche and the uh, algorithm's ability to pastiche could now be merged in really fascinating ways. So I must say, I find it endlessly interesting, this whole thing. I don't think it's going to kick me out of a, a job. I do think, though, that an increasing proportion of the pop music of the future is going to be rehashes of the pop music of the past. We're already at that stage culturally because that's what we seem to want. That's what young people want from pop music. It's what old people want from pop music. You know, it's nostalgic for us oldies to hear things that sound like the Beatles and Bowie and whatever. But also the young people feel that there was a resonance in that era of pop, which they don't really have in anything from this century, really, um, as far as I can see. Uh, so there is this a, a kind of common interest everybody has in, in this hauntological resurrection. The Day of the Dead is the final trumpet and uh, the dead are rising and uh, it's the second coming and all that apocalyptic stuff. Second coming of Bowie and all these people who are, alas, no longer with us. <laughs> Yes, I can never forgive, but I stay for the sad euphoria. I find it fascinating, and uh, perhaps I'm gonna, like Dr. Frankenstein, I'm gonna go, go down to the lab. And um, last night I was down in the lab, uh, hanging with Frankenstein and his crew. What is it, Iggy Pop wrote? Um, all aboard for Fun Town. Momus. Open, University. Open, open, but not the real. Open University. A synthetic one. An improvisational series of talks by Monas. The gaunt minstrel of modern angst. Next Tuesday, Marilyn Monroe is partnered by Laurence Olivier in Terence Rattigan's delightful story of a romance...